Yesterday, Sunday the 23rd, January the year 2022, was Mdabadi's big day. It was his earthquake day. And he came out strongly and clearly and made a statement. He made a political move. It was supposed to be an earthquake day. We will look at whether indeed there was an earthquake and the impact of that earthquake, what Mdavadi's move means to Mdavadi, to the Luya community, the Mlembe nation, to William Samoy Ruto, and to Raila Odinga, and the politics of this country in general, now and in future. But before that, like I did say last Saturday, I have invited Kenyans from both sides, now that we co we've confirmed we only have two horses, from the Raila side, from the Ruto side, to send us short videos, short clips, three minutes, telling us why you think Ruto will be president, why he must be president, why he should be president, why nobody can stop him, why Raila will be president, why he can't be president, why Ruto can't be president observing etiquette, observing civil language, appropriate language, mindful of the provisions of the law and general decency. We will air these clips in text and out text on our channel, free of charge. Of course, we have also asked you that we are not paying you. Bring those videos so that we are objective, we have a conversation. Let those who want to pitch for Ruto do so, those who want to pitch for Raila do so, we will give you an opportunity and I must repeat that we are not a small channel. Our reach is far greater than most of these TV stations. Indeed, only three or so television stations have a wider reach than us. So we invite you to come and talk to us. Sending the clips. Now back to Mdavadi. Nobody should blame Mdavadi. Nobody should be annoyed. The lawyers could be annoyed that he could have let them down. That it has been a sort of a climax for the lawyer people. They are justified to be annoyed. Okay? But we must understand Mudavad is a politician. And is playing politics. Now that brings me to point number one that I want to make this morning. That politics is about interests and not about anger. It is unfortunate that in Mudavadi's big day, what should have been his big day and big moment, became an opportunity to display anger. Look no farther than him wearing ties with Azimio. Look no further at the things he said about Raila. That is anger. That's not politics. That is not interests. Look at what he said about Kotu. Look at what Mdavadi said, the words, the descriptions in reference to Francis Atoli, Court Secretary General. You can see display of anger. And I just want to remind my brother, Salem Dabadi, politics is about interests. Not about anger. Not about anger. In fact, anybody blaming Mudavadi for joining Ruto should be reminded strongly that interests are what drives politics. It is only when you are questioning Mudavadi's interest that I can listen to you. For example, would we not be fair to conclude that it was anger that is driving you to, Mdava, to, to Ruto, Mdavadi, Salem Mdavadi? Because how are Mdavadi's interests cuttered for when he joins William Samoy Ruto? Because if there were interests, I would understand, both for himself and for his people. But look here. When Mdavadi joins Ruto, knowing so well he cannot be running mate, because let's rule out running mate. 
Because Ruto cannot gamble with that position. If he gives Mdavadi running mate, he should count himself out of the equation on the mountain. He can't afford that. So, you are joining Ruto, Mdavadi, not to be running mate, to be minister, which Raila would have given you, which Ruto has given you twice, in your own words. Twice. So it can only be anger, not interest. And look at it even further. How can it be Mudavadi's interest when Ruto will not make him deputy? And therefore he must wait for Ruto to finish 10 years. Ruto's deputy to do 10 years. I know Mudavadi will live long. Our people live long. But surely at 81, will you still be a contender for the presidency with all these generational changes, the changing world? Because look here. Ruto's campaign was founded on the narrative of betrayal. It is what has sustained and propelled his candidacy. That Ruto was betrayed by Uhuru. Do you believe Ruto will do what he has blamed Uhuru for doing? Will he betray his deputy so that you can wait for 10 years? Zero. Therefore, it is not politics. It is not interest. It is anger that Mudavadi was displaying. That brings me to another issue. If Mudavadi gets annoyed, actually sulking, like he did in 2011, 2012. He walked out of ODM in 2012. Because junior politicians in ODM were speaking at him. Pointing figures at him. Ridiculing him. I just want to wonder whether he will stand through his mouth and tongue. If you ran away from ODM because of the ODM politicians, don't you see Sudi the other side and Murukomen and Duale, the things they have said about you? Namakamu Rais, mini liona musali ya mudavadi ana mkosoa waziri wa fedha Henry Rotichi. He, mini kashanga. Nika pataa na musali ya mudavadi hapa kwa mkawa ingine Nairobi Juzi. Nika mambia, wewe ulikuwa waziri wa fedha akanambia ndio wakati wake ndio patni akaiba pesa mingi Kenya hakuna waziri wa fedha tangu Kenya ipate uhuru ambaye alipo, pesa ziliporwa kuliko wakati wa Musali ya Mudavadi Gollemba kama kuna mwizi mkubwa wa waziri wa fedha wa Kenya wamtafute kila mahali ni Musali ya Mudavadi Wakati alikuwa waziri wa local government bunge la kumi, mimi nilikuwa ndani Musali ya Mdavadi alipatikana katika ile kashfa ya makaburi alikuwa ameiba makaburi huko Machakos Sasa wewe nikuulize mtu wa buri hapa Mtu alienda kuiba makaburi akapanga njama ati watu wafufuliwe Ajenge manyumba hapo, uyo mutu anaitha kutuambia manane ofisadi. Which again brings us to, it's difficult to understand the Mudavadi move, outside anger. It's so difficult. Because Mudavadi and the Ruto are like oil and water. At what point do they converge? What has Mudavadi said about it? I know politicians say things about others. But what has been Mudavadi's trademark? Clean man, clean politics, safe hands, free from corruption and all that. Then you join with Ruto, it sometimes doesn't quite add up. Eh? Kuna mambo ya jabu. Deputy President anakaa kwa nyumba ya serikali. Deputy President anapata mushara wa serikali. Deputy President ana security ya serikali. Deputy President wafanyi wake kazi wote wanalipwa na serikali. Deputy President hata stima na maji inalipwa na serikali. 
Deputy President anakaa kwa cabinet ya uhuru. Wanatoa uamuzi huko. Sasa inafikaje? Nafika jioni anasema mimi sijui yale. Mimi najua tu mengine. Hata nyinyi wenyewe simjiulize. Hii ni siasa ya aina gani? Mchezo wa aina gani? Mambo ya uongo mchana namna hii. You cannot be feeding and enjoying all the privileges and the perks of that government and then later as soon as you step out of the cabinet room you deny the same government that you are part of. It is difficult to see how the two are working together. Root on the other hand has called Mdawa de Sera like baby. Or Levy. I know politicians say that, but when you look at that, you begin to see one thing. Ruto and Mudavadi got together yesterday strictly as a rushed decision. If you play back the last two, three, four months, you do not see Mudavadi walking into this coalition. You do not see Ruto walking into this coalition. The things Mdavadi stands for and what he has said. The things Ruto has said about small parties. Even at the risk of losing people like Moses Kuria, who are very, 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 very strategic partners, all in the name of building UDA. In Mudavadi's own backyard, Ruto has said he does not intend to ask a party campaign campaign side by side with them you must come and join them na mimi nataka niulize hawa viongozi wengine kama unaendesha chama na hiyo chama yako unaendesha parliamentary group inaweza kukua eh, eh, kuendeshwa kwa lugha ya mama kama ile neki yako inaweza kuendeshwa kwa lugha ya mama wewe ni problem kwa Kenya kwa sababu nyinyi ndio mnachangia ukabila katika taifa letu la Kenya. Tunaelewana? Unajua watu wanatafuta shortcut ya kutengeneza chama ya kabila yake kwa sababu hawataki kazi ngumu ya kutengeneza chama ya kitaifa. So mimi nataka niwaambie waacheni shortcut, waacheni kuwa lazy, build a national party if you want to change Kenya so that we can get rid of the politics of ethnicity. So when you look at what they have been saying in the recent past, you can see this was something that was hurried. And I'm explaining this. It is out of anger. Because you cannot understand how Mdavadi can say the things he said about Raila when you look back at 2002 when Raila had put him at the front of change to the point of fronting him for president. When he went astray, Raila again picked him and put him in LDP through the referendum of Orange Revolution. Took him through the laundry, rehabilitated him, put him in Pentagon, running mate, made him deputy prime minister, Nusumukata government, and gave him relevance. If you look at the things Mudabadi has said about Raila, then you realize his anger. And I'll explain the anger. Look at Atoli. Look at the pain Atoli went through. Look at the cost. Look at the resources Atoli had to mobilize in 2016 to do research, to talk to people, and to install Mdavadi. At the end of December, 30th or 31st December 2016, as the lawyer spokesman. You may disagree with somebody, but the kind of words Mdavadi used against at all. You can see, therefore, it is anger. And it was not something well thought of. Look at it this way also. And that anger I'm explaining, Mdavadi is annoyed because Raila didn't pay back. He thinks he has supported him enough, he has spent enough on him, and is annoyed with Uhuru for showing signs that he was going to be the one, but then Uhuru favors Raila. That is anger. And it's a short thing, it's a short game. 
Look at Ruto, for example. Don't you think yesterday was a very costly business to Ruto? Very costly. And I will explain. Already the mountain people, there's disquiet in the mountain. Uhuru's, Ruto's candidacy is, is only there if he has the mountain. If he loses the mountain, his campaign collapses on that day. Yet he has risked by bringing Dawadi on board. There's disquiet already on the mountain. What is more, and because of that, Ruto will be forced to name his running mate earlier than he could have done. To tame the disquiet on the mountain. Because people are not happy with them David being brought on board. They may not know whether ultimately he will be there, the running mate. And if he stays long, Uhuru and Raila will invade Mount Kenya region. For that reason, he will be forced to name his running mate earlier than he should have done. And that's why I'm saying this thing was not well thought up. It's not politics. It was emotions. Optics for. And finally, for the Luya nation. I think it has been a sort of anticlimax. Many of the Luyas I've talked to, and I'm a member of many WhatsApp groups, and I've received many calls from people. Many of the people I have talked to are not happy with this move. It makes me to conclude that Mudabadi has set the stage for Raila to once again dominate the entire Mulembe nation. Because it is not possible that Mudabadi will move with people to Ruto. Especially when it became so clear like the event yesterday was a Ruto-UDA affair. It had nothing to do with NC. It had nothing to do with the lawyers. Even when Malala stands and says we have 165 MPs present here, at what point did NC have 20 MPs? 165? You're actually then owning up to the fact that this was an, a, a UDA event. Even the pomp, the color, the cost leaves people thinking somebody other than they had financed this, this meeting. And therefore the lawyer must be feeling a little offended that their only hope, their only son who they thought would go for the top seat is finally going to play second fiddle. And for that reason, I sympathize with Ruto because while he's antagonizing his vote basket on the mountain, the man he's using to antagonize his vote basket is bringing zero. So however hard I look at this thing, I don't, I, I don't see really the benefit to Mdabadi or Ruto. In fact, just in conclusion, I, look, I see the Kirinyaga Ngirishi thing playing out in many areas. I see Sakaja be, being the person to antagonize Margaret Wanjiro, Bishop, in Nairobi. I see Malala antagonizing Kalwale in similar manner that Anwar Guru came to antagonize Ngirishi in Kirinyaga. And I see a lot of these things playing out. I also see something else. I see UDA walking the path of NASA in 2017. NASA lost a lot of seats because of the confusion in nominations. Ford Kenya standing against ANC, Wipers standing against ODM and all of them in the mix and losing simple seats like Langata. Now, because Ruto is, is going to be forced to make certain, uh, certain sacrifices, and compromises to work with Mdabadi, to create room for Mdabadi, and in that opening, a few other parties may now join, they will face the same, same hurdle, the same, same problems in nominations that NASA faced in 2017 that made them lose very obvious seats. For that reason, however hard I look at it, I can only see this as a blunder. And people have said this that Mudabadi suffers from the decayed factor, where there are errors of comedy. In 2002, he made the blunder. In 2012, 10 years later, he made the same blunder. 10 years now, 2022, he's making the same blunder. Unfortunately for him, 
with this generational change, I don't see him having another opportunity to make another blunder. He'll look back for his friends, Francis Atwoli, it will be too late. He'll look back for his friend and partner, Raila Molo Odinga, too late. He'll look back at Uhuru Kenyatta and the things he has said about Uhuru's government, it'll be too late. However, as a brother, it is never too late, too late to do the right thing. My advice to my brother, and now the lawyer people, I'm now vindicated. My advice to my brother is, we are in politics, please. There is no room for sulking. There's no baby in politics. There's no room for anger. Play politics for yourself and your community. It is not too late to do the right thing. Salam Dabani.